How's it going, everybody? Nerds Rising here, and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In today's video, we are finally seeing off season 12. We can all take a breath, guys. It's almost over. I know that the season has not been my favorite. Um, I definitely haven't had the best run in the season. As you see, I'm only at 30, 33. And last season, in a, quite a bit fewer battles, I was at 32, 95. So definitely hasn't been my strongest season. But I also just feel like it hasn't been Niantic's strongest season either. The Order of the Cups has been very weird. There's been some kind of not that fun cups, to be honest, like the Catch Cup, for example. But uh, either way, I was like, you know what? I can get one more video out before the end of the season. And I happened to check out the Catch Cup on the first day that it was released. And for whatever reason, as Niantic always seems to do, they messed up and they actually allowed Mons that you caught in March and onward to be used on the first day of the Catch Cup. Now, they quickly realized their mistake, as usual, and quickly corrected it to September and onward by the second day. But the first day, I had a huge arsenal of Mons from like the last six months that were available to me. So what I decided to do was look at my Community Day Mons that I built that had the exclusive Community Day moves that weren't necessarily recommended. And beware, you don't see too many of them, but typically you're gonna wanna run either Payback and Superpower or Payback and Stomp. And the same with Obstagoon, you can either run Night Slash and Cross Chop or Night Slash and a Nuke like Gunk Shot or Hyper Beam. But again, PV Poke does not recommend Obstruct on Obstagoon or Drain Punch on Beware. So naturally I was like, you know what? Let's use both of them on the same team and let's see what we can do with them in the 3100s. And as you see, I'm now at 3033, so I did lose for sure, um, but I actually did get some wins and I did actually have a couple positive sets with this team. So, although I definitely do not recommend this team, it's definitely more for fun than for gaining elo. I actually did get some wins, so let's take a look at two pretty strong Community Day Mons and let's see what we can do with their off meta moves. So. As you're gonna see here in this first battle, we are leading knocked out, and we are gonna be using Beware as our safe switch, but we have a perfect lead in Trevenant, so no need to safe switch out of here. We're gonna stay right here, and the opponent safe switches into a, a G-Fisk here, and this is actually perfect, and you're gonna see here, Obstruct is very handy, because normally G-Fisk can hit you with an Earthquake, and at that point, you're basically in a range where Rock Slide will KO, but since we get our Obstruct off first, this Earthquake is gonna do significantly less damage, only doing about half, and we are not in Rock Slide range, so the opponent has to build up to an Earthquake if they wanna take me out, and I'm simply just gonna outpace him here, throw the Night Slash right away, and even if this doesn't KO, which it barely doesn't, we're actually gonna be able to take them out before they get to the Earthquake, so this is huge. And since they didn't throw the Rock Slide, we are now in a range where a Seed Bomb, since we're buffed, may actually not KO as well. So let's see. We're going to get our Night Slash off. And the opponent is over farming very nicely. He's probably going to throw right before we get to the Night Slash. So very nicely done by the opponent. But as you're going to see, Obstruct Boosted Obstagoon does not care about Seed Bombs. And we tank it with very low HP. And we're going to get another Night Slash off here. And we're going to either take this thing out or get, get a shield, and we actually do. We take out two full mons with our Obstagoon, and I was expecting there to be something else weak to fighting in the back, which is why I, I brought my Beware in, but it's actually a Wigglytuff, and this is very scary now. I'm actually really hoping I can just get this off, but the opponent shields, and now this is gonna be very close. We've done very little fast move damage with the Shadow Claw, and now we have a, a, a Wigglytuff with the shield, and these charms are gonna be very, very oppressive. So I very carefully time my move here. I throw after 10 wing attacks for correct timing, and we're gonna get this sky attack off, but the opponent knows he can survive one, so he lets it go. And now what you're gonna see is a very crazy end game. I realize right here, I'm gonna pause it. As you see, I'm just getting to the double sky attacks here, but what I'm realizing is if I throw this sky attack, the opponent is gonna get a charm through, and I don't think that I will survive the charm and get off my second sky attack. So I realize here, I have to commit to fast moves and hope that I can get this thing to one HP so that one counter from our Obstagoon will KO. Because if we can do that, our counter will get off before their charm. So let's see what happens. We do get farmed down, and but we do get them to one HP and our counter registers before the charm. And we take a very, very close game. I think there, if I throw the sky attack, 
the second sky attack i lose so very well played by the opponent um but we're moving into the next battle we've got a trash wormadam and um this isn't the worst lead because we are hitting for neutral since this is a bug steel type um and we can't really say switch out of here again because our beware does not appreciate confusion damage so we're just going to stay right here get our sky attacks off we're being careful to throw our sky attacks in between confusions and uh they're going to hit us with an iron head here but iron head as you see doesn't do it too much damage so i throw one more wing attack in the middle of their confusion and now i'm going to throw my sky attack in i'm actually just hoping the opponent lets this go and now i'm going to try to catch their second iron head here on my beware because we're not really in in danger of taking a lot of confusion damage now that we've gotten this thing low and as you're going to see beware's pretty glassy but that iron head still doesn't do too much so unfortunately we're met with an azu here and no matter what, if you're running Payback or Drain Punch, everything we're throwing here is going to be resisted. So we're just going to bo boost our defense right away here and basically prevent the opponent from farming us down with Bubble. And now I'm just going to start going for superpowers here. And as you're going to see, these neutral Shadow Claws and these resisted moves actually do add up on Azu. And we get the Azu here into the Yellow Hell. And he's forced to throw, which is even better. So I'm perfectly content to let this go. And I'm going to bring my knockdown in here and hopefully the opponent over farms and allows me to get to a sky attack. That's what I'm really hoping for here. So let's see what happens. We come in, we're very close to the sky attack, but the opponent throws right away. So I'm realizing now, you know what? This is an obstruct Opsigoon feature. Let's give two shields to obstruct Opsigoon and see what we can do. And the opponent actually gives up switch and blindly brings in his Licky Tongue. And this is perfect because Licky Tongue has a terrible matchup against Opsigoon. They are going to be having their licks triple resisted here. And I'm actually going to shield the first one here because I know I can get to two obstructs before he gets to another body slam. And now when his body slam gets off later on, it's, we are going to be double buffed on our defense. So we throw our second obstruct, and now we're just going to commit to a full counter farm down here. And as you're going to see, he does get to another body slam, but check out how little damage this does here. Absolutely nothing. And we basically come out of here with like three quarters of our health, and we still have a shield. So this Azu is not out of the woods. It's below half health, and he's energy dry. So he comes in. We're going to obstruct right away just to start getting our counters ramped up. And um, as you're going to see, counters after the obstruct do actually do a noticeable amount of damage. And now I'm realizing I probably just need to go straight for night slashes here. So I am going to shield, and I'm triple, triple buffed here still. So their fast moves are doing nothing to me. They do bait me with an ice beam, which is unfortunate. But now I'm just going to go straight for night slash here because we're way ahead on energy. And the opponent actually does commit a shield, and we boost. He brings in the Wormadam to reset his debuff, but he gave us farm. And now I know I can get to two Night Slashes before he gets to another move. And the opponent makes a nice play here. He realizes his only win con there was to call an Obstruct Bait, but I do not go for the Obstruct, and I take a very close game. And you see there, an Obstruct Opsigoon actually beat an Azu. So definitely has some play for sure a uh, pretty bad matchup here in the next battle we bring in our beware which is our safe swap and the opponent brings in a kafa grigas and this is not a good matchup from kafa grigas unfortunately we're not running payback so we're not going to be able to one shot because as you see here this was enough for a payback the opponent calls it which is unfortunate but uh if we had payback there we would have just straight up one shot at the kafa grigas uh, but he calls it and here i actually am worried about a psychic so I shield, and I realize that the opponent throws a Dark Pulse. He's very likely not running Psychic, because there's no reason to bait, because Dark Pulse and Psychic are very close on energy. So at that point, I just throw my Drain Punch there to basically make these moves do nothing. And I'm just going to fully commit to a farm down here. And I should actually come out of this matchup with 100 energy and still enough health to where the, the opponent's going to have to throw an Earthquake if they want to take us out. So... As you're going to see here, we only committed one shield. We probably could have committed zero shields and still won this. But uh, again, I was worried about the Psychic. Uh, but the opponent has a tough decision here. And they actually bring back in their G-Fisk. And he's probably expecting a Drain Punch bait. But I am not baiting. I am sending the superpower. And it lands. And it does massive damage. And now I'm almost at back-to-back -back superpowers. And I'm not baiting again. He may be expecting another bait. But I'm going straight for the superpower. And we take out the G-Fisk. Our, our Beware has taken out two full Mons here. And now they bring in a Swamper, and again, we're double debuff. I'm not baiting. We land another superpower, and at this point, the opponent just stops attacking. They realize here that it's over. We were just going to obstruct our way through that Swampert, and a good game to the opponent. But uh, guys, as you see, 
if you can give these mons like beware and Opsagoon some time to start ramping up you can take out entire teams with them so very good game and we've got an Iraq winning in the next match and this is another amazing lead for us and this one is actually staying in and it's running infestation so he's doing virtually no fast move damage to us and uh he must be extremely weak to knock down the back because this is an absolutely terrible matchup for Requinid. Um, we're going to take advantage of this and we're just going to get our sky attacks off and just take this thing out. And then I, what I'm planning on doing is safe switching into Beware the second they bring in their next mod. Because I have to be reading here that if they're staying in this bad of a matchup, they must be absolutely core broken by this knockdown, like a Trevenant in the back or something. So... I'm shielding nothing, their moves do nothing to me, and I'm just going to fully kill this thing, and then you'll see here I switch into the Beware, and they bring in a Skarmory, so this is their answer to Knockdown, so I'm definitely expecting a Trevenant in back at this point, and here is another situation where Drain Punch is actually very nice, because most of the time you're not going to want to bait with Superpower, because it debuffs you, so in a normal situation you'd be going for the Payback here, and the opponent knows that and he knows most people aren't running drain punch so he actually respects the payback but i have drain punch and uh i actually buffed my defense again which makes these sky t or these uh air slashes do less and now i'm going for the superpower and it lands and the opponent probably thinks he can farm down but since that drain punch went off we were only at, at neutral defense there and we get another superpower off and we fully take out the skarmory with our with our beware there and now they've got their own obstagoon and at this point i'm just going to bring my own obstagoon in here obstruct and just farm all the way down and even if he has uh his own obstruct here we have a very healthy knockdown on the back so we're just going to use these counters, take this thing as low as possible, and then clean up with Knockdown if we have to. And he actually baited it with a Night Slash there, so he's probably running Cross Chop. But as you're going to see, we obstruct here, and now we're going to be able to fully counter this obstacle down before he even gets to another move. And again, obstruct and Drain Punch coming in handy in those battles, so definitely has some play. We have another Trevenant on the next lead, and this again is amazing, but the opponent brings in a Drapion, and we don't have the best answer to a Drapion, so I will stay in here and chip this thing first with the Sky Tag before I bring anything in. And this is a situation where it'd be nice if we had Cross Chop on Obstagoon, because now all our moves are gonna be resisted, other than the counters. So uh, we're in a little bit of a tricky situation here. Fortunately, they're not running Sludge Bomb, so that's huge. So I can tank Aqua Tails for days. And here you're gonna see me I think I make a bit of a mistake here. Here's a situation where I should have just gone for Night Slash because as you see, I obstruct and obstruct is such a weak move that it's actually not going to KO and it allows the opponent, as you see, to survive and get off another Aqua Tail. And if I would have just thrown the Night Slash there, it would have KO'd and I don't think that we're quite in Seed Bomb range. So since they got that Aqua Tail off, we're now in Seed Bomb range for this Trevenant. Uh, we are going to get to one Night Slash, but now the opponent can massively over farm and uh, take us out with quite a bit of residual energy. So I think I should have just Night Slashed the Drapion, but as you're going to see, uh, the energy on this Trevenant is not going to be very useful because we have a Knockdown, which is such a hard check to Trevenant. So there's really not much use for this energy. So I'm expecting him to switch out right away, and he has a Shadow Swamper, so this is going to be very close. Again, I can't really come in with Beware right away, so I'm either going to chip this thing or get a shield. Let's see what the opponent does, and he does shield, so now I will tank a Hydro on my Knockdown, and uh, then we will be bringing in Beware. So this is going to be a very close endgame because Shadow Swamper is very, very scary. Let's see what Beware with Rain Punch can do, and this is definitely a situation where it's nice to have a move that will buff our defense. So. We've got shields, we're gonna start using them. And um, I'm actually gonna go for the Drain Punch straight away. And the opponent over farms and we win CMP. So this is huge. I really hope that the opponent shields this as well. I think it's a superpower and he does. That's absolutely massive. And now since we Drain Punched and not superpowered, we can tank a Shadow Hydro Cannon. The opponent knew there that if I superpowered, a Hydro would easily KO. But since we have Drain Punch, we're able to survive the Hydro Cannon. And now we're going to just put it on knocked out here because I know that the opponent's not going to get to two hydros and we're going to be able to farm down before he does. So I'm just going to continue to farm, commit to the farm down. And if the opponent brings back in his Trevenant, I'm just going to throw the sky attack because even if he has shadow ball here and, he, and he's not even at the shadow ball, we're not quite in shadow ball range. So um, I throw the sky attack. This will easily KO the Trevenant. And now the Swampert's in farm down range. And as you see there, Drain Punch Beware really made that Swampert more manageable, so good game. 
And these battles are flying again. And we've got a knocked out mirror here. And this is a bit unfortunate because we do need to safe switch out of neutral matchups to check for a fighter in the back. But unfortunately, we can't really switch out of here because knocked out absolutely destroys beware. So we're going to stay in for a little while and play this out. And my goal here is to get some damage off and then potentially catch the next sky attack here. Um, we need to get this knocked out low before you think about switching out. So let's see if they decide to shield. And they don't. So this is perfect. So now I'm going to farm up to the to the next sky attack and catch his sky attack on my Opsagoon. So uh, this way, if we have to face this knocked out later on with our Beware, he's basically in super power range. But the opponent's actually staying in and over farming. So I'm just going to take it out with a Night Slash here. And if he doesn't want to commit a shield, we're actually going to just take this knocked out out. And he actually just lets it go. So that is absolutely perfect. And since we over farm here, we're going to outpace this Shadow March Stomp to a move. And uh, honestly, I'm thrilled by this because uh, I really don't want this thing up against my Beware of Possible because it's it's very, very spammy and it hits very hard. So very nice over farm by the opponent there. But we're just going to bring our knocked out back in. And uh, we, may, we may actually be in Surf range here. So we'll have to see what I decide to do. And I actually don't fall for the CMP tie. I go for the extra wing attack. And now I know I can slightly over farm before I throw my sky attack in. Depending on what the opponent does here, I may bring him beware. But let's see. Let's see if he decides to shield this. Is he going to commit his last shield on the sky attack? And he does. So now I'm thinking he may be weak in the back. So I will actually stay in here, build up some energy. And I will be actually shielding up this surf. Because I'm reading there may be something else weak in the back to knock out if he's shielding. And he actually brings in a Shadow Drapion. And I, I build up to 5 here. I tried to catch the Crunch, but the opponent holds on to the energy. But they make a mistake here. He builds up some energy, but he allows me to get the energy from my move. And I do win CMP. So I actually decide to go for a Drain Punch here. I wasn't sure that a Superpower would KO. But what I know is that if I Drain Punch, I will now comfortably be able to survive this Aqua Tail. Whereas if I go for the superpower and it doesn't KO, the Aqua Tail will definitely KO me. But as you see, we tank that Shadow Aqua Tail pretty comfortably, and the opponent's going to have to throw right away or we get to another move. And I'm very close to the back-to-back -back moves now on my knockdown. So since he was forced to throw right away, I can comfortably come in here, farm up to the back-to-back -back Sky Attacks, take out the Drapion with the first, and we will have a Sky Attack loaded for the Shadow Marsh Stomp, and we will take out... The Shadow Marsh Stomp with our second Sky Attack. So very nice game by the opponent. Very cool team of the double Shadow backline. But again, Drain Punch there and Beware. I'm not sure that Superpower Payback Beware would have been able to close that game out. So very nice game. And in the next battle, we have a Sneasler. So this is a very cool pick. Um, a very nice lead for us. But again, the opponent safe switches into a Shadow Swamper. And Shadow Swamper is just kind of tricky for this team because it's so spammy and it hits so hard. So we have to stay in here initially. We're going to tank one Hydro Cannon because we comfortably take one. And then I'm either going to force a shield here or do some damage. So let's see what the opponent decides to do here. And he actually shields. So now I will bring in the Beware since they emptied some of their energy. And I'm hoping that he lets me get to my move first. And he does. He had the energy, but Beware has a pretty high attack stat. So most people don't expect that. He does unfortunately call our bait. But again, since we Drain Punched right away, we can tank a Hydro Cannon now. Typically, a Shadow Hydro Cannon would nearly one-shot us, but with our buff defense, we comfortably take it. And here, I'm actually going to commit to a farm down, but um, as you're going to see, this ends up being a little bit of a mistake because I just barely can't farm down. I had lost track of the opponent's energy, and now I'm going to be forced to commit my second shield. And unfortunately, this Sneasler is going to be resisting all of our moves. But Sneasler is very glassy, and Beware has a very high attack stat, similar to a Great League Charizard. I do bait here, thinking that the opponent might shield just because he's so glassy, but he calls it. And now I'm thinking, is he going to respect this superpower? Because even though it's resisted, like I said, Beware hits very hard, and Sneasler is very glassy. And he doesn't, and it nearly one-shots. I aggressively bring in the knockdown, knowing that... One wing attack will nearly KO, and I force him to close combat me there. And now, even though he's still alive, he does not have enough energy to deal with our Obstagoon. And I was expecting there to be something else weak to fighting in the back with a Sneasler lead. And sure enough, our counters and obstructs are going to absolutely tear through this poor Miltank. And he shielded the obstruct too, probably expecting a cross chop. And now, this game is over, because the opponent is very low. Their Sneasler is very low, and as you're going to see, after our Obstruct goes off, 
these moves are going to do absolutely nothing to this Obstagoon. That Ice Beam doesn't even do half of our remaining health, and at this point, there's no reason for me even to farm down. I can simply just throw the Night Slash here, take it out, and then just two, one or two counters will take out the Sneasler in. A very good game, and a, a close one at that. Alright, so next battle here, we have a Swampert lead. And again, in neutral situations, I do need to be safe switching out of here at some point to check if they have a fighter in the back. And um, this is also not the shadow, so I'm more than happy to take Hydro Cannons on my knockout from a regular Swampert. So let's see what he does here. He throws the Hydro, and I believe I do throw the Sky Attack right away. And I know that the opponent is only one mud shot away from his next Hydro. So I think I might actually try to catch this time onto probably my Obstagoon. Let's see. And he actually holds on to his energy. There's a nice play by the opponent, and he builds up a lot of energy, and then he catches my Night Slash onto a Toxapex. So, very nice play. And guys, Toxapex, I don't know if you guys have been seeing them, but Toxapex is just so dang bulky. That Night Slash, as you saw, does absolutely nothing. Um, so, I right away, I'm going to just start obstructing this thing and getting it so that my counters do a little bit more damage and my future Night Slashes do a little bit more damage. And also, as you see, uh, he's going straight for Brines, and after that buff, that Brine really does not do too much damage. So, But unfortunately, this is still a losing matchup for Obstagoon. Um, well, I think maybe if we were running Hyper Beam, we could win this matchup, but Obstagoon is just going to be destroyed by Toxapex, no matter whether you're running Night Slash, Cross Chop, Obstruct. And as you see here, this Brine just barely doesn't KO, but unfortunately, the opponent does farm us down. So we did get a shield from them from the Swampert, so we have a, a shield advantage, but... This is just a bit tricky. There I build up to a sky attack. I bank the sky attack and I come in with my beware here to tank this brine. Doesn't do too much, but we're just in a bit of a tough situation because this Swampert has basically two hydro cannons loaded. So we'll have to see what I decide to do here. I probably will try to go straight for the drain punch and the opponent very wisely throws his second hydro before we get to a move in. What he does is he forces us to burn both of our shields right away. But the nice thing here is Again, most people aren't running Drain Punch, so he may think this is a superpower, and he does, and he shields. So now, now that we're buffed, even though we're just about at half health, as you see, buffed Beware does not get KO'd by Hydro Cannon, and we are going to be able to get to another move. And I build up just before I go down, just to prevent whatever his third Mon is from getting some farm, and I will take the Swampert out right before I go down. And we're, our switch clock is up. I tried to switch out, but I get sniped by a Dragon Breath. And unfortunately, this game was over. They had his wilds, but he tried to catch. He tried to catch our move on the Toxapex, and he failed. So now we've got two Sky Attacks. I was gonna say this game is over, but the opponent gave us a chance here. We now have two Sky Attacks, and as you see, that Sky Attack just does barely less than half. Can we get this second Sky Attack off and then farm down before he gets to a Body Slam? This is gonna be very close. And unfortunately, he just barely outpaces us there. So the opponent honestly had that game. If he simply would have just stayed in and got to the move. But by switching out, he gave our knockdown some farm and he gave us a chance. But he still takes the game in the end. So a very good game. And unfortunately, we have another rough lead, uh, a Medicham. And honestly, Medicham destroys our backline. And um, even though we're hitting it for super effective, since we're a normal flyer, we're going to be taking neutral damage from the counters and super effective from the ice punches. So the opponent wisely throws there on CMP to prevent me from over farming. And um, I'm really hoping, as you saw, I tank the ice punch there. But since he gets off his move first, that forced me to make the first shielding decision. And since I let it go, the opponent now knows he can farm me down here. And what you're going to see is the opponent is actually running power up punch and he baits me. So I realized there... I, I had, after I shielded that, I'm realizing that the opponent can probably farm me down before I get to another to another sky attack. So I actually bring in the beware, realizing that I kind of have to before he ramps up again. I know I can tank a move here, and I should just barely be able to KO with the superpower. So I throw my superpower in. Even though this is rough, even though he's basically taken out our knocked out and our beware, we have a an obstacle and we have a shield advantage. So I'm hoping this is their only response. And as you're going to see, the opponent has a toga kiss. And at this point, I realized there's absolutely nothing I could do. Even if I was running Gunk Shot, I wouldn't get to it in time. And I just end up surrendering there. So good game to the opponent. But Medicham is very, very tough for this team. And amazingly, guys, I saw so many Medichams in the catch cup. Like, people just really going all out building these mons. So 
another Swampert lead in the next battle. And this may be the last battle. I believe this is the last battle. And uh, this time I'm going to try playing this a little bit differently. Um, I know I can tank two Hydros since this is the non-Shadow Swampert. Last time you saw me try to catch the second Hydro on my Obstagoon. But this time I'm just going to stay in here and play this a little differently. I will throw my Sky Attack now. We've gotten a shield, so it'd be nice to get some damage off. But as you're going to see, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The opponent does let that go, and his Hydro Cannon here is not going to be threatening to us. Again, if this was the Shadow, it would nearly KO us, but since it's the regular Swampert, we pretty comfortably take that. And we do end up actually saving a little bit of energy in case they have a Fighter in the back, um, but we're very low, so we just now have to hope that our Noctowl isn't needed in the back. And the opponent brings in a Dragonite, and as you see here, Dragonite actually wins CMP over Beware, and, but I do have enough energy for the payback, and I actually am expecting the opponent to shield this, because again, most people aren't baiting with superpower, but he calls my bait, so very nicely done by the opponent. And this time I'm going to throw slightly before they get to their Dragon Claw, and this is a resisted superpower, but does the Dragonite respect Beware's attack? And it does not, and we KO the Dragonite with a superpower, but the opponent has a Scrafty in the back, and honestly guys, if he shields this, this is game over because Scrafty destroys our backline, but he lets it go, and now we might have a chance here. This is going to be a very tough fight for Obstagoon, but I think I can get to a Sky Attack here if I bring my Knockdown in. I'm thinking maybe I, I need this Wing Attack damage, so I decide to shield. I can't take that counter damage on my Obstagoon, but the opponent actually brings in the Swampert. So this is going to be a very close finish. I really need to farm down the Swampert before I get hit with another Hydro, but I don't. He had back to back, and now our Obstagoon is going to be basically at half health. We need four counters to KO, or the opponent will reach a power-up punch. One, two, three, and the fourth counter KOs. And what a close finish to that game. If he gets the power up punch there, we simply just lose the game. And honestly, Night Slash would have been double resisted, so I'm not sure that would have KO'd. So a very, very close end game there. But as you guys see, Obstagoon with Obstruct and Beware with Drain Punch actually can put in some work. I don't necessarily think if you haven't built the Community Day Mon already, I definitely don't think it's worth your Elite Charge TM to build one. But if you've got it sitting in your storage collecting dust like mine were, give it a try sometime because in certain situations, it can be very surprising. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching my videos. We're now at 46 subscribers. We are so close to 50 and I've just been absolutely thrilled with the support I've gotten. So thank you so much for watching. And remember guys, if you leave a subscription, the more subscriptions we can get, the more Pokemon my wife will let me play.